looked up in the dictionary. A mother is one who exercises care and tenderness towards others, especially children. You know, the Bible says, Paul prayed in Ephesians 3.15, I pray to the Father, and the Amplified says, from whom all fatherhood gets its title and derives its name. Well, if all fatherhood proceeded from God, he created Adam out of dirt. How many of you know boys just love to play in the dirt? (laughs) And then he took a rib, and I like what it says. He fashioned and molded and created Eve. So if fatherhood proceeds from God, then motherhood does it well as well. And we know that from the Word of God. Think of the fruit of the Spirit, gentleness, kindness, goodness. Generally, these are characteristics that you see in the woman. Comforter. Whenever your kid has a boo-boo, who do they run to? Mama. Because <laughs> they know daddy will probably say, oh, you're okay. Go ahead and go. Mama's going to sit and hold them. And So we are by nature those, those comforters. So I believe all of motherhood. So that's why we said today we're celebrating motherhood. And you're going to see as the service proceeds that how God uses those characteristics in you, whether you've had a child or not, to show compassion, to show comfort, to show care, because that's what he's all about. And I have some amazing ladies that are going to help us today do that as they tell some of their experiences, which, as I said, I know all of you have a story. Everybody has a story, but they are awesome, and they have something that, they're, that is going to bless each one of us. So Miss Kia... Miss Kia Simpson, if you will come to the platform up to the front here. Hallelujah. And while she is, put the picture back, please. They went real quick. All right, Kia, introduce your family to us. Can you, on the screen? There you go. So, okay. I have my oldest, Kinsley, who is 10. And my second, no, I'm sorry. So, that's, there's one missing. So I have Kinsley, who is 10. I have Nylon, who is nine. That's my bonus baby. I have Samson, who is five. Roman over here to the left is three. And then Amira, the baby girl, is almost one. She'll be one on Tuesday. Praise God. Yes. And I told Kia, give her a hand. Uh-huh. I love Nylon there in the middle, you know, holding the baby. I love that. She calls her, not her stepdaughter, she's her bonus daughter. That's a good way to say it, isn't it? That you're just a bonus to to my life. So, Kia, if you'll take a seat, we're going to talk to you in just a minute. And now, Miss Melanie Hoffman, praise God. If you have kids in Kids World, they know Miss Melanie. She does the music, has a great voice. And Melanie, can you introduce your family to us? Oh, there's your microphone right here. I'm sorry. So my husband is on the left. He currently is in South Carolina, deployed, so working remotely to the Middle East. But uh, and then uh, my children, Asher in the flannel, me in the middle, then Asa, Aiden, Olive, and Alex. So. Praise God. And all the age range is? So Alex is 22, Aiden's 20. Ash, Asa's thir- 16, Asher 13, and Olive is 6. So. 6. And yes, they're all by the same mom and dad. They're just <laughs> spread out there. Praise God. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, next is Janice Alvarado. Praise God. Hallelujah. Janice, if you will introduce your family to us. Yes, ma'am. Um, so Jasmine, the one is on the floor. She's 18 years old. Cassandra, 17. Sophie on the back with my husband, Billy, he, she's 13, and then Isabella is six years old. Praise God. Now, you got that. <laughs> Three teenage girls. Okay. So we'll have some things to talk about here. All right. And Miss Lucinda Bledsoe. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, this is going to take a while. Come around here to get all of her. So if you can introduce, we see your daughters. Okay. Um, Next to me on the left is Rochelle, my oldest daughter, out there somewhere. Rochelle's I'm in here. the middle. This is years ago. This is uh, Nicole on my left side. Of her the, other your, daughter. Your right. The, the middle granddaughter next to her is Amethyst. We call her Amy. The, our baby granddaughter is uh, Shamalia. 
and our oldest granddaughter, Rochelle's daughter, those, those two are Rochelle's daughter, is Erica. She's in St. Louis. And our, and our middle granddaughter, she just blessed us and moved here in, in uh, December. Praise God. We're going to hear a story about them in just a minute. And your granddaughter in St. Louis has how many children? Blended family t- t- Ten. Yes. <laughs> Ten. Okay. So, uh, but Lucinda's a special blessing. She's been a sitter uh, for our family with my mom for, gosh, what, 10 years or more? More. And, and I, when Lainey and Lindsay and myself were in the wreck years ago, a lot of you have heard that story, Lainey had a head injury, so when we came home, we had to have somebody sit with her 24 hours a day. And Lucinda and Marie, I'm sure is here somewhere, they came and literally 24 hours a day, because, you know, I'd hurt my back, and I'll sit by her bedside and watched over her. So if that's not the example of motherhood and caring, uh, I don't know what is, but praise God. I just had to honor her in that way. I asked her not to do that. <laughs> praise God. All right, so we want to talk just a little bit uh, about some things about motherhood. So Kia... Um, I know, you know, you have quite a few younger children. What are some of your challenges with little ones? Ooh, um, some of my challenges, uh, you, so they are, you know, they're wild. (laughs) And sometimes it can be hard to control them, especially in public places. So I I think that's definitely a huge challenge. And um, just being patient, you know, learning to be patient with them and work with them through, you know, just growing up. They, you know, they just got here. They don't, (laughs) they don't know much about life. So (laughs) they don't know the rules yet. Right. Uh, I know we saw a little Roman uh, and um, he was a little one, three year old. And, you know, moms, we... We have to fight for our kids in so many areas. And one area I know that touches all of us is when your child is sick and very sick. God has has to help us through that and fight with the fight of faith. So tell us the story about Roman, because little Roman was almost not here. Right. So this was the very end, actually two days after Christmas in 2020. Um, Roman just got sick out of nowhere. Um, He started running a very high fever, and he was sitting there quiet like Roman is the the wild child he was quiet not crying just staring so we knew something was wrong Uh, we rushed him to the hospital and the first hospital we took him to they said oh he's fine you know he's probably just a little virus give him some fluids and he'll be okay but something in our spirit did not just sit right with that So we then kind of took a little break, and then we said we have to get him back to another hospital. So we took him to Oshner, LSU, and they ran so many tests because they saw that his his heart rate was extremely um, increased. His breathing was increased, and they found out that he had uh, what's called bacteria pericarditis. And um, the bacteria had split, spread through his, uh, to his bloodstream. So it was a gram-negative bacteria, and any doctor who knows that Um, We had some doctor friends, and at the end, they ended up telling us that they were actually preparing um, how they were going to assist us once he died. And um, But when they gave me the diagnosis, I'll say beforehand, the Lord had prepared me because I was calm. You know, when our kids get sick, you know, sometimes we like to, like, we get frantic and, like, oh, my gosh. Literally, the whole time, I was calm. I had peace. And um, once they gave us the diagnosis, I knew, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's time to fight. I I felt like literally walking to the waiting room after they did his first procedure, I put on my boxing gloves. So I got in my word. I, I, you know, I declared the word over his life. I prayed. I got people around me, like everybody I knew. I'm like, hey, y'all, let's link up with me and pray. We did that. And the doctors expected him to be in the hospital. They had to care flight him to New Orleans. They expected him to be in a hospital for six weeks minimum. Okay, they said he was going to need major heart surgery. The Lord worked a miracle with him. He was only in the hospital in New Orleans for two weeks. It was a supernatural, supernaturally fast healing. And the Lord like did that. But he taught me how to fight as a mother. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's something that moms and dads, but moms, you can do. You can fight with the word of God and fight with your prayers for your children. We don't have to accept 
well, let's prepare that he might be, you know, going on to heaven. Praise God. Fight. That's a word I want you to remember today. Fight. Melanie, uh, let me ask you, I know uh, you said your husband's deployed and this happens a lot. What is the challenge with that, with children and every, you know, that, that uncertainty or that not, you know, regular uh, go to work, come home, dad's going to be gone. And this time it's been six months. Mm -hmm. Yep. He should be home in hopefully two weeks. Yes. But uh, the biggest, we've, we've been blessed that it hasn't been very long. Like my, usually he'll be gone for about four months. This time is about six months. Um, Things we found is we've been lucky that he's not in very dangerous areas. So he's a flyer, so he doesn't do too da much dangerous things. But um, for the kids, we, we do try to do FaceTime. So I'm so thankful we have that. So yes. even when, when they were little, it was, it was harder because they, they didn't understand that the daddy on the screen, like what, what that was. Yeah. And Asher, we used to have to, or Asa when he was little, my favorite thing he would say, daddy sleeps in Glom. Guam was where he was at that time. So, um, but the... the there's always an adjustment period when he first goes. It takes a couple of weeks for us to be like, okay, so what do we do in the evenings now? So we have to like readjust our schedule. So we find things to fill the time where that daddy used to fill. And we, when he comes back, that's another big adjustment period because the Air Force gives us usually about three weeks to adjust to him being home. But that means he doesn't work and he's in our faces, <laughs> which I love him. But <laughs> but when you're when you're used to someone being gone for so long, he comes back and like he's on his schedule and we're on our schedule so we discovered that we go on vacation so uh, we'll, go, we'll, we'll be gone for about a month next next month just warning so <laughs> I'm sure that is hard when you've been the mom and dad and then you have to step back and take you know let dad be dad and he needs to remember that we're not military and so we don't <laughs> we don't take orders quite as well so <laughs> yes I used to say I remember Sam, you know, he'd come home from the office, you know, and he'd ask for something, and I would tell him, uh, where's Linda? I would say, I am not Linda, you know, because anytime <laughs> Sam would even think, you know, in the office of coffee or this or that there, and then I'll tell him, Lainey, one time he was in the chair, and he was sitting there, and he said, Lainey, he was in his recliner, go get me such and such and so and so, and she had heard me say this, which is not a good thing to say, <laughs> and she said, you have two legs, get up and go get it yourself. <laughs> And of course, Sam told her right away, your mom shouldn't say it. She can say it, but you can't. <laughs> We've got to watch our words, too. Uh, I know also, I'm sure you moved around because you you just moved here to Shreveport when? Just uh, 2020, the 2020. worst year to move ever. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another adjustment with your children. Going, yeah. New friends, new place, new home, new church, everything. Yeah, that's, that's actually one of the big reasons we homeschooled was we found it was easier to adjust to different areas and we could get in with a church. But um, we also we, we found that jumping in with a church right away was the best way to get to, to know people. Um, but also, just a note to you guys, when you have a military family come in, don't, like, push them away because you know they're going to move in a couple years. Like, bring them, give them hugs. Bring them in. So, because I, I did find that's been hard. So. That's great advice. You guys have been wonderful, though. So Especially for those moms, you know, with kids, too. Exactly. They need that, exactly. that yeah. as well. So, and, and her kids are, are awesome. Uh, Asher, if you saw our Christmas program, he was Bob Cratchit. <laughs> and just, just the sweetest person and all. But how has it been homeschooling? It's, it's great. We, I've homeschooled my oldest. Uh, he went to kindergarten. No, I, I homeschooled kindergarten, but he went first and second. And my second also went for kindergarten. But um, I found that they went to school from about 7, 7.30 to 4, 4.30. And I just missed them. So I, that was one big reason was I didn't like them being gone for so long. And then my, my second, I love him, but he was, he was a handful. And the, we, we would get a lot of notes home from school, like the, <laughs> he'd get the, the red flag. And, and he's such a good kid. He just had a lot of energy. And he learned better upside down or laying on the floor or on a bouncy ball. And that just didn't work really well in the classroom setting. And, and I didn't want him growing up thinking he was naughty. So he, that was... We kept getting notes home, and I'm like, okay, enough of that. He's, he's a good kid. I don't want him thinking he's naughty. We're going to do this at home now. So, Awesome. That's awesome. I know more and more people are thinking about you know, homeschool because of 
how sometimes some of our, our public schools are getting to be. So you might want to go to Melanie. She's a, she'd be a good resource Yeah, please for that. hit me up if you have, need any advice or need to figure things out because I've been doing it for, he's 22 now, so I think we're on 15 years now of homeschooling, maybe a little more. So Yeah. And if you haven't met Olive, usually she's the one in cowboy boots. Yeah. She loves to wear her cowboy boots and with her dresses, so she's the cutest. But Janice, um, being the mother of um, teenage girls, and uh, I know that presents challenges, and, but I know you've overcome. So what wisdom can you give to parents, grandparents, and all that are dealing with teenagers? Okay. Well, I have a couple of things um, as I was preparing um, I believe that, you know, the challenges that we have faced with our girls is one of them is like getting them to talk to us about things when, especially when they are going through seasons of life. And, um, and of course, we had to learn a lot because whenever I had Jasmine, I was 18. So when I look back and I told her this, around her birthday, you know, I just start crying because just seeing how young she is now and how young I was, her dad was 17. And so when we got married and, you know, did life and stuff, we didn't know a lot of stuff. But I'm thankful to God that he has placed us here at Life United with amazing people that has, you know, we've asked questions. You've been there. Pastor Sam has been there. Um, but, you know, when they go through, you know, challenges of self-worth, their values, um, depression, anxiety, all of that is so real. And so I'm thankful to God that he has planted us here, um, especially in this time, in this season of their lives. Um, I've learned that our daughters are different. Uh, different characters, different ways that we have to approach them, talk to them, uh, ask some questions differently. And so we've, we've seen that. We've seen the difference of um, those challenges. The other one is getting them to come to church. And it's, it's the hardest thing for me as a mom because I want m the best for my daughters. I want God's plan and purpose to be fulfilled in their lives. And so there's times that it takes them, you know, a minute, but my encouragement is do, do not stop bringing them, do not stop inviting them. Um, you know, I think motherhood, that was one of the words that God gave me is that motherhood is, is something that we gain, but at the same time, he gives us that ability but there's a reward when we push through everything that comes with challenges, especially teenagers. It's hard because it's not easy, you know, but, um, but I've seen that. I've seen the different ways to approach them. What about as teenagers or you know, any children, but especially in teenagers, you know, they're starting to try to separate from you a little bit. And um, what, is, what have you done like with concerning like friends when they have these friends mm -hmm. uh, as a mom? Yes. So my girls um, at this point, you know, I think in life they have learned that not everyone, every friends that are out there, they consider friends because some of them, of course, they have pushed them to do wrong things and they have followed through as well with the things, but they have learned now that they have to choose wisely. Um, like one of my girls is more like the want to talk on the phone more with boys. And so just teaching them, teaching her really is that there's a time and a place for everything. Sometimes, you know, the world presents to us everything so quickly. We want to rush to life and things and friendships. And this is my friend. This is my sister. But I believe that God has those right friendship for them in the right season of their lives as they're willing. So, mm -hmm. And you know what? As a, as a believer, and especially as one filled with the Holy Spirit, he will help you so much. Uh, we've told this story before, so Taylor, don't be upset. 
But, <laughs> uh, we, you know, all kids go through some of those times, challenging times. Our, and, and Taylor was having some of those things with not having the right friends and all, but we just, of course, kept praying for him. And I was always the kind one that I could not go to sleep until I knew my children were all home and in the house. And a lot of times I'd have them ask them, please come tell me I'm home. That's all you have to say. And uh, then I can really go to bed. And one night he wasn't home, he wasn't home, he wasn't home. And it got to be about two or three in the morning. And so uh, I was still laying on the couch. And Sam had come in there and said, you know, you're, you're not, when are you coming to bed? And I said, well, Taylor's not home yet. And so um, anyway, so we prayed and he, the Holy Spirit told him exactly where he was. And so he got in the car and drove to an apartment complex. And he's told him which one. I mean, you can imagine going up somebody's door and knocking at three o'clock in the morning. But uh, he just knew it was the Holy Spirit. And he knocked and Taylor opened the door. <laughs> he was there and uh, he knew, you know, he should have come home. And so he came on home. So the Holy Spirit will help you you know, you know, tell you, you know, there used to be a little thing on uh, TV. They don't even do it anymore. But when I was growing up, it was a little advertisement that came on and it said, it's 10 o'clock. How many remember this? Do you know where your children are? <laughs> if you know that, then you're older. But they used to do that on uh, right before the news. Sometimes we stay on these stations. So the Holy Spirit He'll remind you of that. Do you know where your children are? Mm -hmm. And, and do you know who they're with? And so you've got to be really, really careful. Um, I remember Dr. Summerall was one of our mentors, and he was, he was strong. You know, he had three boys, but um, he never would let them go, even these years back, and stay the night with people, obviously, hardly at all, unless they knew him, knew the family, knew uh, were there siblings in that house that were close to that age and everything. So you're not being you know, mean, you're watching out for your kids yes. to know, you know, how the enemy comes to get. How many of you know that today, especially today, the enemy's after our children? Yes. So many ways he's after our children. And so, and grands, and at least in this case, great grands. And so our greatest weapon is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Pray and ask him, you know, just... There, I could tell you several stories that have happened, but I don't want to embarrass my children. But, you know, where things will be going and, and, and the Lord would speak to us or speak to Sam and say, you need to check up on that, mm -hmm. you know. And so listen, uh, listen, you, you that are grandmothers now like I am and great grandmothers, we can you have a little bit more wisdom. So maybe we pay attention a little more. But but listen and and pray pray for others. I know Janice and Billy, when they went through some things with their you know precious daughters, uh, you know would call us and they would call people that they had confidence in. I, we need you to pray. We need you to pray, and so follow that in your heart. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, Miss Lucinda, I know. Well, first let me say Janice too. And I, I know I, I know y'all are too, but I know for sure Janice is a prayer warrior. She's in that prayer closet. And um, that's one of the greatest things you can do, moms, is just pray and cover them all the time. And I know Lucinda prays. Like I said, she's a sitter for my mom, one of the sitters. And she'll tell me stories all the time, you know, about her children, her, her grands, great-grands, and what, what God is doing. And um, the story that you mentioned about your granddaughter that was living in Dallas, and uh, she, they just recently moved to Shreveport. And so you're glad to have him here. But um, her little boy, I know you call him Junior, Junior, uh, tell the wonderful testimony about what prayer, how you praying, teaching your daughters, your granddaughters to pray, what did for little Junior. All righty. Well, he will, be t he will be two years old in a, a few weeks. Uh, and it's like, I guess she might have been three months pregnant at the time, four months or whatever. I get a text with a picture of the sonogram or whatever on there, and I could not even look at it. I just deleted it out because I didn't want it to alter my faith at all. And, uh, I, you know, honestly, I just start crying. I says, God, we, we have never had this. I says, I have three, had two healthy daughters and three healthy granddaughters, and I says, I don't, 
I just really don't know how to do this. And I cried and I prayed and I prayed and I cried. Then when I got a piece and he told me, just what you simply do is love the child when he comes until he goes. That's what you do with everybody. I said, duh, that's right, you know. And so when I got through all that and then I called her and I said, Amy, I said, how are things? And she says, I'm, she said, I'm okay, Granny. And she said, but I, I talked to God and she says, he told me to love him till he, when he comes, till he leaves. The very same thing. Because the doctors were several were saying you need to abort. They needed. They. I asked her. I said, "Did they say you needed to abort?" And she said, "Yes. Uh, one. Some of them did, but not hers. But she told them I didn't. I don't feel that. I don't feel that I should. Because they said, well, the, your baby's going to be in such horrible shape and this and that and so much pain. You don't. You don't want him to live like that." She said, "I'm. I'm not feeling that." Mm -hmm. And I told her. I says, "Well, God has told you the same thing He told me. That's a confirmation." And I just thank God through. Prayer, teaching her mom when she was a little bitty. She came to me with a prayer and said, "I can't. I, I didn't. I prayed and didn't do." I said, "What did you pray?" Now I lay me down to sleep. I said, "No, it's time you learned <laughs> to pray." <laughs> you know, and so through her mom and the family getting together, I mean, we have a thing on on text. We text one another and we just do letters, letters, letters. We're praying about something in the spirit. And we just send that, and it's just like, gotcha, <laughs> you know. And so that's what we here, uh, we started doing that. Just, hey, just praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. We didn't want to call out things, you know, because then the enemy could take that and, and whatever. But anyway, they said that he would not. Say that again. Listen to what she said. Oh. You said you didn't want to necessarily call out things that the doctor had said Dead. to even speak that out of your mouth yes. to give the enemy a place to work. That's, That's good. It would have given him a place, and then he, he would torment us with that, you know. So it was just so, so many things that they said those junior was wrong. And uh, we prayed, and so then uh, she, did not, she did not terminate. And then um, they would give her up, upgrades and, the, oh, this is wrong. Now that's wrong. And now his bones are brittle. His bones are already broken in his body, his kidney, his this, his that, and just thing after thing. But we just kept praying and, and holding fast. So she did have him premature, which didn't help much, you know. But we still stood, fa stood fast on the Word of God. Junior, like I say, will now be two years old in a few weeks. And uh, hey, uh, Ben or Chad, whoever's doing the pictures, can you go to those pictures or with Lucinda? Sent quick. All right, keep going. All right, and where is he? Wait, go back. There he is, right there. And go to the next one. And there he is over there. Is that him in the striped suit? Is that him too? Junior is in the little seat with the stripe. Yeah, on the left. Yeah. You, Look at that well, little baby. Well, you can't see that he, he didn't put the picture up, but his you could see his his legs was just like. But now you see his legs are perfect. He runs around. You have to go back to the other one. It's not up there. I don't. Yeah. Think. Yeah, but it's praise just, God. It's just a blessing, but it's through prayer. We did not. We did not alter our prayers, and we just said he's going to live and not die. Hallelujah. He's going to be, gonna be Praise uh, God. normal. She sent me a video from at Timeless Toys, and I still had it. I looked at it last night because uh, she, Lucinda had him, and here he was up there, and he was helped packing the bags, and that's what she sent the video. Here's little Junior packing little bags for Timeless Toys, just healthy, healthy, healthy as ever. Praise God. Amen. We, just call, him, we call him our miracle baby. He's a miracle like, baby. Because there's still ongoing things that they say could happen. So we just don't, we don't confess any of that. Listen, this lady, anytime my family, my kids, my grands, because uh, she'll pray and she's not going to talk to anybody else about it. And um, I've had her pray for, for so many things. I hope this will be okay. I want to tell this story. Um, you saw the family there that was her Lucinda, her daughter, you know, her, her granddaughter. But um, back when they were sending out the government checks, you know, and Lucinda's a widow. Everybody loved Herbert, her husband. And, um, you know, has sort of a fixed income there. And so she got, like a lot of people, the check, you know, in the mail. And um, 
She was praying, and the Lord told her to send it to that granddaughter, Junior's mother and the husband and everything. I mean, and she could have definitely used the money, but she sent that check. And they were at an apartment building or something, and there had been some uh, cars stolen and different things. And they arrested her granddaughter's husband, said he, you know, fit the description and arrested him. And guess what? The bail money that to get him out of prison was exactly what she sent them. And when the case came up, how many months and months and months and months later? Just, just this year, really. He's right. Completely re- He could have still been, you know, he would have still been sitting, sitting in jail. jail. And they said it was a mistaken identity. And so he was, you know, set free. So I know she prays. God will help show you so many things that you can do for your children, Amen. for your grandchildren, for your great-grandchildren. So... I just, I want to say to you today, ladies, that um, God is, um, he's involved. We're raising his kids. He loves them more than we ever could. And I just want to encourage you, don't be so hard on yourselves. You know, we're not perfect. And go to God and he will help you in whatever it is. And your kids, even though they may be 41, they're still not too grown for you to give them wisdom. You know, they have their own families and lives now, but still to that, but mainly prayer for them. I know, Kia, you said you wanted to share one thing that to encourage some of the moms. So what I would encourage moms with is, like you said, don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, I feel like people criticize us enough. And a lot of times when we start criticizing ourselves, we start putting that criticism on our children and our family. And so um, two things that the Lord, um, that the Holy Spirit spoke to me was to, instead of criticizing uh, your children and being so hard on them, he says, I want you to demonstrate my power and demonstrate my love and also teach. So teaching and being a demonstration. So teaching them a word, the word and demonstrating the power and the love of Christ. And also, just like the Bible says that um, the word of God is an imperishable seed, plant the word of God in your children. And if you continue to do that, it's going to produce much fruit and it will manifest. And you may not see it now, but it will happen eventually. So, yeah. Amen. Do you have a nugget, Janice, for... Moms? I do. Um, There's a couple of things, but one of them is, and I think we said it, but God, you know, God has been faithful. And so always remember that he is faithful. He sees the seeds that you have planted in your children's life. It will never, it will never come void. God's word is truth. Always stand in his promises. Never give up. And never stop praying for your children. God hears you, and he is moving, and he is working. Amen. 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 Do you have a nugget, Lucinda, to share with the moms? Just uh, remember that when you were young. (laughs) (laughs) Say that again. Remember when you were young. And the things that you did that only God and you know about. So when your children come to you, please do not be so hard on them that you cannot remember and forgive and be like Jesus, the good shepherd. He he watches after the flock and he has the rod of correction, which is to correct where they're going. And, And if they do go astray, Go after him. Go after your children. Do not leave them out there if they stray because that's when the enemy comes in. They're alone then, and then the devil is going to whisper things. They get hooked up with the wrong people. So always just remember the good shepherd and his. When I, well, I'll, I'll just go on rabbit trails and keep going. So <laughs> she, she said, Don't let me, or earlier, don't I let me know rabbit my daughter trail. somewhere saying. She, She's got so much wisdom, we could sit here all day. Because you were the youngest of how many children? Thirteen. Thirteen. Her mom had thirteen children. No, no, she, she did no, not have. She it was blended. Blended. Thirteen. They, they had five together when they got married, and then Daddy had, uh, she and Daddy had eight together. 
And he was 30 years older than her, guys. So it's like <laughs> he was 30 years older than mom, and they still had eight children together after they got to. <laughs> he I took mean, that I, word, be fruitful and multiply, I'm, literally, I'm, I'm didn't all, he? <laughs> I'm all mixed up now. But anyway, yeah, they had eight together after they got together, and he was 30 years older than her. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you gained a lot, a lot of wisdom. Yes. <laughs> Melanie, what? nugget of wisdom would you give? I would say walk your faith because your kids are watching you and treat them how you want them to treat others because one thing I found is if I need to set them straight, correct them, I can say, do you see me doing that? Do you see your dad doing that? So you need to be, be the example for them. That's good. That's really good. Hey, because we're still kids too. We're all God's kids. You know, and we're still learning. Um, yesterday, I had the honor and the priv privilege. We hosted, once again, we did last year, a, uh, an event for foster parents. And this last year, it was mostly around the kids. We had hot dogs and hamburgers and blow-ups. But this year, they wanted to do um, the DCFS to honor the parents. And I'm so proud of y'all in our church. We had had a wedding uh, a week ago. Christian Giddens and Sky got married. And... Um, we have these really pretty lights that we string in the ceiling. And so we said, leave them up. And so they came in and they fixed beautiful flowers on the table. Y'all, it was gorgeous up there. And they were so honored, you know, these, these foster parents. Uh, one the lady that won the foster parent of the year had fostered for 36 years and had fostered 153 children over those 36 years. I mean... I told her, you know, Miss Grierson, and she said she was kind of getting ready to wind it down. Her mother had passed away a few weeks ago, and there was a little boy that she had when he was four years old and had him for a time. Well, unfortunately, which happens a lot, it rolled around again, and he needed foster care. And so he asked them, please let me go to Miss Grierson. That's the only place I've ever felt love. And, of course, she said, I was prepared when anybody, if they call me, because... Believe me, Lainey's a foster parent. They call. They need, you know, Kelly was. They need help all the time for people that will foster these children. She was prepared to say no, but when they told her what he said, she was like, how can I say no, <laughs> you know? So, but they asked me to just share like five minutes and to pray. And um, the Lord spoke this to me the day before, and I just want to say this to you mainly to the moms, but to all women and to God, fathers, men too. He said, when you touch the life of a child for good, you touch my heart. We touch the heart of God when we touch and care for children for the good. So remember that, moms and grandmoms and uh, great-grandmothers, that uh, when you're doing good to touch a child, you're touching God's heart. And he's involved in that touch. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to pray for the moms in just a minute. But we have some other moms that we want to honor this morning. Um, this is celebrating motherhood. And um, I wanted to honor them because I wanted all women to see that even though you may not have children yet, or you may not have married or had children, that you still have those characteristics of a mother. So Miss Cece Green, I want her to come to the platform. We have somebody that's going to help you. Praise God. Cece, if you know our Macy that we love is in Kids World, works with Lainey, loves the children. That's, that's her daughter. But Cece had her niece live with her all through her teenage years. She came to live with you at, at age 13? 13 or 14. And yeah. left at? Uh, 27. And while she was there, she had a baby. So in her home, she was a mother as an aunt to her niece and to her little, I guess would be your grandniece. <laughs> or was it a boy? Yeah. Grandnephew. And so I know Miss Leanne. Where's Miss Leanne? Miss Leanne is, is so amazing in the music, uh, helping us. She's been with us for years. And for so many years, you know, she has not birthed any children of her own. But we prayed so many prayers for her nieces and nephews because she was exhibiting those, that motherly love and care uh, for her nieces and nephews. So I just wanted to honor all aunts today 
that have been involved in your nieces and nephews' life. Cece, they, you know, her niece did live with her, but maybe uh, you've not had them live with you, but you've prayed over them, you've blessed them, you've wanted to help them. So we just wanted to honor you, Cece. And uh, y'all just give her a hand. Just come around this way. This is my other daughter, Jen. If you don't know her, Taylor's wife. So praise God. If you'll help her down. Um, thank you, Cece. Kelly, come on, Kelly. Kelly Morgan. I wanted to honor Kelly today. I spoke about foster children. Kelly... Uh, has been in, involved in that. And uh, she and her husband, Troy, he's here somewhere, fostered two little babies that they did have the blessing to adopt, Kevin and Maida, who are now? 17 and 18. 17 and 18, <laughs> praise God. And, you know, has, has been involved in that. Kelly, how many years have you worked in Kids World? Um... Maybe 20. 20 years. She's been involved. She and her husband are very involved in outreach. They love uh, doing the outreaches, you know, with Lainey and, and loves children. But, um, hey, some of you, you may want to pray about that and consider being a foster parent. Uh, they said yesterday at the meeting, they said if we had 150 more, then we'd be about where we need to be. Not over and above right right now. And so, you know, you can be such a blessing to these children. And some of them may wind up being your lifelong children. So I just wanted to honor Kelly and anyone else that maybe you are caring for children through through foster care or through family. Some of us, and, and I could call some names right now, have had grandchildren come back or other members of your family, children that you've taken care of uh, because of challenges and situations. So Kelly, we just wanted to honor you this morning. Praise God. She's standing in representation for all of those other. Okay, and Miss Eva Johnson. Come on, Miss Eva. Praise God. We wanted to honor her. This lady is a true blessing. We just, she just started coming. This last year or the year before? 2019. Time flies. Here, come over here. Get, get on the royal carpet here. <laughs> and uh, Miss Eva is currently raising her grandson. I mean, not just temporary for life. Little? What's Julian. Name? Julian. And Julian is how old? He'll be eight next month. He'll be eight. And uh, she actually, he is her sister's son. And uh, she's, she's raising him. We won't tell the story, but there were some challenges and some difficulties. And she also raised his mother. His mother. That was her sister's child. So what a blessing to, we've had women from time to time, Miss Yvonne, I miss Miss Yvonne, I always miss her right there on the front row. Miss Yvonne Cash, who went on to be with the Lord several times, had her, her grandkids for like a year or more because her daughter was in the military and had these long deployments and uh, she would have more than once, these, the grandchildren. So what a blessing, Miss Eva. We love you and we just wanted to honor you and bless you this morning. Any other grandmothers here? Just wave your hand that are raising or have your grandchildren. We just want you to know how much we appreciate you. Thank you, Miss Eva. And Miss Karen Scott. Where's Miss Karen? Karen, I know she's here. Here she comes. If you've been in this church any time until just recently and had children, you, Miss Karen probably taught them. My children... Uh, you know, we have all this technology and all this stuff, but Miss Karen, one of their favorite things was Miss Karen and her felt board. She used to do all the Bible stories. See, for kids nowadays, that's, that's a novelty. That's awesome. But she worked, has worked in Kids World for about 30, around 30 something years. Laney is 34, and Laney remembered the, the color sheets and the felt board characters. But I wanted to honor her. She's also a mom of two daughters and, and has grandchildren. But this is something else I wanted to bring up today, celebrating motherhood. Because Karen resigned from Kids World to go take care of her mother, who now has gone on to be with the Lord. But 
I'm doing that now. My mother's 98 years old, and I have to tell her, Mom, you've got to get in the shower. Mom, we've got to cut your nails. Mom, this. So it's like role reversal. And uh, I know, where's Leanne? Leanne's mom, Leanne Grisham, mom went to be with the Lord. And uh, so she cooks and, uh, and helps and takes care of her dad. Trying, what a blessing that is, Leanne. She said, she was telling me how he likes sweets. Always makes the food that he likes and makes sure he has some sweets. There's a lot of you that are doing that or have done that or will do that. That it's going to kind of be a role reversal where you use those motherly characteristics to care for your mother or your dad. So, Miss Karen, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for all those years. All those years with your children. Praise God. And we just wanted to honor you today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I want all the moms to stand. Moms, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, y'all all stand. I want to pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. To honor you, to bless you, to let you know you are not alone. It may seem like it sometimes when you have a child that's really misbehaving or ill and you're the one, you know, while your husband is in there asleep, you're the one up in the other room, you know, rocking and comforting and, and all of this. And that's okay because they have their part to play as well. Father, I just want to bless. Just receive this. I speak a blessing over these mothers today, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. Father, I know that, that they all have your heart. Father, that you are available 24-7 whenever they call upon you to help you, to remind you of, of what your word says about their children, their grandchildren, great-grands. Lord, I just bless them. I thank you for every one of them. I thank you that you keep them strong in their faith. I thank you that you keep them strong in their bodies. I thank you that they feel your care, Father. Even sometimes when they have those great challenges when their children are little and they're worn out physically, Lord, I thank you that you, you're support for them. When their children get older and that emotion, Father, that emotion that comes in raising a teenagers and, and young adults, Lord, you're the strength for us. Father, I, I pray courage over them. I pray blessing over them. I pray wisdom over them, Father. I just thank you that everything that they need that comes from you, you freely give to be that mom. And I thank you, Lord, that you just show them that you've also covered their mistakes. Lord, they're covered in your love. And Lord, I just thank you that you help us as moms to, to be that one that is that example, as all of these ladies have said, is that one that fights in prayer, is that one that lives that example, is that one that takes the time to have those difficult conversations with their children, and is that one that is always and ever praying and listening to you, Lord. And just like Mary, sometimes these things that you show us, we ponder them in our heart. We keep them in our heart. We season them, Father, with your uh, word and with your prayer. And Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for all our children today, our grands, great grands. Thank you that you bless our children. I thank you that they are blessed, Father, because their moms, Father, serve you. That's the greatest thing we can do as a mom is serve you and love you and teach our children to love you. So I bless them today in Jesus' name.